Hi, in this particular tutorial, we're going to talk about spatial statistics and we're going to talk about mapping clusters. In my previous tutorial, we looked at global or descriptive operations. They returned a single value or a single feature class for an entire set of points, lines, or polygons that can be compared to each other or amongst itself over different time periods. In this particular application, we're going to look at local operations where we start to compare individual enumeration units within each other. This is an example that I have from a bear research project that I did in Northwest New Jersey. You can see the points here represent bear sightings in Northwestern New Jersey, and I superimpose them on top of a grid. And you can see the grid here is made out of evenly spaced and evenly sized points, except where we have our border. But I turn this layer into a density map. So you can see some of the method to the madness that I have here, where if I zoom into these individual quadrants, because I perform quadrant analysis on this, where I counted the number of features within each of these squares, and then I looked at a distribution versus the distribution of these points using a summary versus a Poisson distribution, which would be the expected amount. In this particular case, I kind of took this one step further where I ran a density analysis that I talk about in my raster operations to simulate the bear habitat size to look at an average bear density for each of these quadrants. You can see this particular quadrant right here, or this particular enumeration unit, has no sightings right here, but you can see there's a number of points around it. So I wanted to assign some value based on the placement of the lattice or the size of my grid or whatnot. Now this size is based on quadrant analysis, which is based on the number of features and the size of my study area. So the reason why I made these equally sized and equally spaced is because when the New Jersey Department of Wildlife mapped this originally, they mapped it by boroughs and townships, which are unevenly sized and have different sizes and shapes. And we want to kind of take out what we call that, you know, some of that spatial bias because of some, maybe some of these literal areas or these um, oddly shaped areas. So we made these all equal. I ran the density analysis in my raster tools, and then I grouped it using my zonal statistics, and then just joined it right back to this. So I turned this point map into a map like this. And this is called my average density. And some of the things that I can do here in my clusters is that I can map hot spots, and I can do cluster and outlier analysis. I have something called local Moran's eye. And if I were just to look at this tool here, this local Moran's eye is a really powerful tool that looks at high, high, low, low relationships to see if high values are surrounded by other high values and low values are surrounded by other low values. And I can run this. But more particularly, I'm going to take this one step further and I'm look at something, look at something called hot spot analysis using the Geddes or GI star statistic. And this returns hot spots and cold spots. So high values surrounded by other high values and low values surrounded by other low values. And I'm going to do this for this average density underscore three that I have here. And remember, this is just generalized from my points that I, that I showed before where I ran this simulated this bear habitat and then grouped these by these particular quadrants here. So my input feature class here is going to be my final grid that I use. My input field is going to be my average density underscore three because I look at different um, permutations of this. My output feature class, I can change this. And then when I look at my spatial relationship, I want to define what is a neighborhood. Okay. Are they next to each other? Is there some sort of fixed band? And these are the different options that I have for this. Inverse distance, inverse distance squared, meaning as I go further away, it's going to have less than effect. We square that, basically things that are much closer are going to have much more of an effect when we look at inverse distance squared. Uh, contiguity edges only, meaning if it's a border, it's only going to have an effect on that particular value. So there are a lot of different ways that we can look at this. For now, I'm just going to take the input. My distance is going to be Euclidean distance, straight line distance, standardization, and I'm going to leave all of these the same because what I want I just want to get some hot spots and cold spots that show these with statistical significance. Now, as you can imagine, you can generally see where some of these hot spots are going to appear. I'm not sure if we're going to have any cold spots, and I'm going to show an example here in the future. Here, 
you can see when I run this particular fixed distance band, it gave me a default, default neighborhood of about 4,700 feet. And if I remember right, these grids are about one mile square. So there should be about 2,600 of these grids right here. And this, like I said before, this is based on quadrant analysis, which is a, a simple formula which uses the size of my study area here for Northwest New Jersey, and also the number of features that we have, number of sightings. It's going to run this real quick. Let's see what we have. Click close. Okay. And you can see here, I have these hot spots with 99% confidence, some other hot spots here with 95% confidence. So basically, it looks at these relationships and it brings in I can open these up too. I can open up my brand new attribute table here. So you can see the attribution for these here over here in my right hand column. And you can see my GI score and my fixed value here. And it kind of brings in also a Z value that looks at this with statistical significance. So you can see I have a lot of hot spots here. And as you can imagine, they match up with my concentration of points. And they also match up with my final grid right here. Okay, so as you notice, I do have some hot spots here. Even though these aren't the highest values over here, they're just high values surrounded by other high values. And that's what cluster analysis means. Okay, they don't necessarily have to be the highest values. Another example that I have here. I did some research where I grouped it at the county level because in an optimal situation, we want the sizes of our numeration units to be equal. But I did some work recently with the MCDOT where we mapped the average horizontal accuracy by county. We wanted this mapped and reported at the county level so we can look at these different highway districts which, which make these decisions of the, I don't know, 12 or 14 different highway districts in the state. And you can see here, this is the average horizontal accuracy for a number of points that we digitized throughout the county. And you can see in this particular area here, they range from almost half a foot all the way up to 18 feet in the extremes of the state. And I'm going to run this again because you notice before I didn't have any cold spots. Okay, and we'll see what means a hot spot and what means a cold spot here. Just by looking at this, you can see this is going to be a cluster right here. And since these values are low, I would imagine this is going to be a cold spot, which actually means it's good. And we need to, need to attribute that correctly. Now, I'm going to run this again, a hotspot analysis. And I'm going to run some different input parameters. My input feature class is going to be my average horizontal accuracy. And I join this, so you're going to see the points. My input field is going to be not counties here, but this is called sheet one, called average horizontal accuracy, because this is a join. And my conceptualization of spatial relationships, let's see what I have here. I'm going to have contiguity with edges and corners, meaning it's only going to look at the values that it shares a corner with or shares an edge with. Okay. This can be especially problematic, especially when you prepare data where some of these counties in the extremes of the state, they're only going to be affected by one or two other counties around it. Okay. So when we look at some of these Euclidean distances, like our fixed band, it might look at a certain threshold around it, like some sort of buffer, and that's going to be the definition of a neighbor. Here I change this around a little bit so that the definition of a neighbor is anything that borders it. Okay. My method is I don't need to stip I don't need to stipulate my um, distance method anymore because I told it here. Your neighborhood is just going to be the things, the enumeration units that you touch. Okay? So as you can imagine, when I had those quadrants before, with the edges and corners, I was going to be sharing, my neighborhood was going to be the eight that surround it okay? with corners. If I just looked at edges, it would only be four. Okay? So this value here, this hotspot value, this GI star, and eventually the Z score that computes the um, the um, significance uh, percentage is just going to be based on those four or eight or two or if it's that fixed bandwidth it might be a little bit more so i'm going to look at this here i'm going to run this okay. and while i'm running you can see i have some other ones here i have grouping analysis and they do much the same thing okay to me this ancillin local moran's eye is just a takeoff is just a um 
a little bit different than the hotspot analysis. To me, I like the hotspot analysis a little bit more because it gives us our level of significance and also gives us our high, high, low, low relationships. And the previous versions of this local Moran side didn't do that. And let's see what we have here when we run this. Let's see what we got. Now you can see here that cold spot that we had before. You can see this is our cold spot with 99 and 95 and in some cases here 90% significance in your confidence. And you can see this one here. This is low value surrounded by other low values. And what we learned later was that there were georectification and um, georegistration efforts with imagery by the NCDOT on these particular counties here. Now you can see the hot spots, okay? High values surrounded by other high values. I can see a hot spot out here, a hot spot out, out here. And you can imagine these hot spots here in the western part of the state, they might be a bit problematic because they're only being based on, or these values are just based on its neighbors. So it's only based on one, for this particular county, or it's only based on one, two other values. So we need to be careful about our data preparation here when we run these. So in conclusion, when we map clusters, we're running local operations that return values for individual enumeration units to see how it is versus the other values around it. And this is a very powerful tool when we do this for, we can also run this for points. And in this case, I ran this for polygons.